Well, hello, glorious people of the interwebs, and welcome back to Red Dead Redemption 2. Today, we're heading to Anusburg to uh, check something out here in the epilogue as John. Yes, grammar Nazis, I know. It's Anusburg, not Anusburg. It's a joke. Relax. It's okay. You'll survive. But thank you all for coming to hang out with me. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Now, this is something I actually have not encountered myself at all in the game, and I've I've known there's a lot of these different things you can do in the epilogue once you get control of John, and that is to go see old gang members. So, um, we have checked out the article where you can see Reverend Swanson as... Oh, Jesus, he just got riggedy wrecked. Where's that guy's bounty? Where's his bounty? Don't even, don't even act like it's my fault. I will pimp slap that mining helmet off of your face. Oh my god. I like that the NPCs will glide and or move out of the way of other NPCs, but they will jump in front of you. This is absolute bull dookie. But anyways, enough of that. Uh, apparently, here in Anusburg... We can encounter good old Char- or not Charles, uh, Rainsfall. So, let's see here. Or is it Eagle Flies? I can't quite remember which one's which. It's been so long since I interacted with them, I can't quite remember which one is the son and which one is the dad. It's supposed to happen somewhere here. I think it's- oh, there he is. Yep, just sitting on this bench right here. Wouldn't even have noticed because there's like a dude about to give him a lap dance or something. Didn't I meet you a long yeah, I had it right the first time. Ago. I don't know. Was uh, Arthur? Arthur Morgan? Oh, yes. And my name is Rangeful, and I'm Jim Milton. John Marston. Oh. Was Arthur? Uh, he passed away a long time ago. Oh, I'm sorry. He saved my life. He gave his. That doesn't surprise me one bit. <laughs> and you? I know you had tough times. Ah, uh, well... My people aren't really a tribe. They're just a bunch of families, I suppose. But we're in Canada now. It's, uh... What are you doing here? I don't really know. My son, I suppose. Oh, he fell. I, I know. I'm sorry. I've got a son. I'm very sorry. Oh, it was a long time ago now. Well, it's good to see you, Mr. Marston. <laughs> and you. Uh. I'm going to send you on a bit of a fields trip, but the main reason we wanted to do that was because of the massive amount of honor that you can get for, for talking to him. So we went from absolutely neutral honor to, uh, I believe it's plus two bars. So a couple hundred, I think. I think maybe we got like 150-ish honor from that. I can't remember exactly what the scale is, but it was enough to get us actually into the honorable side of the bar. That was an absolute ton of honor. I actually, now that I think about it, I wanted to see if you could follow that train but I'm pretty sure it disappears after the cutscene. I'm like 99% sure. Now this is not the only person we can meet in the epilogue. There's there's quite a few throughout the map. And this one in particular is really nice. I I really liked uh, Rainsfall. I really wished we could do a lot more with them. In my opinion, I think it would have been really nice. Maybe some more side stuff to try and help them out. Uh, maybe we'll get a DLC with, like, Charles in the future. I know that's been a highly requested one. And who knows? Maybe it could be a thing. Uh, but there is another uh, old gang member that I would like to meet today. 
can. It literally rained for like four days straight in this game. Absolutely oh. ridiculous. I was like, can it please stop raining so I can just record this without being molested by the sound of raindrops? Ooh. Now, the cool thing about knowing that Rainsfall goes up to Canada is that is also where Charles, at the end of the epilogue, decides to go back to find a wife and raise a family, which I think is really great for Charles. Um, but it would also be really nice to see, you know, all the stuff that transpired for Charles in, like, a DLC, not only during the Red Red Redemption 2, but throughout the epilogue and, you know, becoming a brawler and stuff like that. I think it would be a lot of fun. But now... Here we have, you know, let's get the horse hey out of the way of the train tracks. Um, I have had my horses be run over in cutscenes. It's, it's not fun. There we go. Hello there, pretty lady. Mary Beth. John? John, is it you? How the hell are oh, you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Abigail, is she? She's well. Jack's growing up. Sweet boy. Not anymore. <laughs> but he's okay. How are you? I'm well. I, I right now. Silly romances, but it's fun. Oh, it's such fun. Do you? My pen name is Leslie Dupont. It's sort of French, sort of ambiguous. Well, the books are unambiguously awful, but they sell. Good for you. I'm so proud. I still think about you all. That was... That was quite a time. Yeah. Arthur... Arthur saved my life before he passed. I don't... I swear to God if it's raining much, again. But I think about him. Me too. And Dutch? <laughs> Ran off someplace. Such a shame. Last call. Anyway, John, I better get on my train. It's really lovely seeing you. Oh, here. It's for you. Thank you. Take care now. Bye! Huh. And just sticks it into the satchel of, uh, the, the bottomless satchel of destiny. Oh, so this... Oh, no! See, my freaking... <laughs> get up, horse! Can we actually, like, get on the train and... Oh, God! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh, I don't have a horse reviver! Oh, my God! <laughs> what happened? Oh, no! Cornelius! Oh, God, Cornelius, no! Somebody get me a horse reviver! Cornelius is still alive. Oh, my God, there's a duel here. No, we gotta save- we gotta save Cornelius! I'm gonna be so pissed if Cornelius dies just as I get there. I ran all the way through Valentine, got the horse reviver. I'm sorry, buddy! <laughs> I'm so sorry! Oh, you're alright, boy. Oh, God, we got glitchy legs! Oh, Jesus! Oh, my God, Cornelius! Whew. I thought you were a goner there, buddy. I got you the good stuff, man. Yeah, here you go. Get yourself some energy, buddy. I, I should probably just put some. I don't even have any food. You know what? Let's get off Cornelius. Let's, let's. Get, oh my God. This poor horse. I can't believe that happened. All right, let's get him away from the tracks. And I, I want to read this book. I'm genuinely curious to know. At least it's finally done raining. All right. Open the satchel. Not the horse stuff. I could have just done the thing. Okay. The Lady of the Manor. An audacious new romance by Leslie Dupont. Chapter 6. Can we not start at chapter 1? Okay. A twist of the knife of time. Susan Grade, the Lady of Leicester, stared out the highwayman. Stared at the highwayman, her bosom heaving, her heart pounding in her chest, her flintlock dueling pistol ready to put a bullet clean between his eyes. David Vincent, the infamous Black Knight, the most wanted man in England and France, smiled. He was not nervous. 
He was never nervous when faced by beauty. The woman's anger and rage excited him. I'm sorry about your husband, my lady, he said mischievously, but it was a fair fight. A fair fight, she gasped. You shot him in the back. I never did, but we shall come to that later. He winked at her. Oh, oh boy. She raged, yet even in her anger, she felt something else swelling. Oh no, oh no. A pain even worse than grief, a reality that has punished women since the dawn of time. Love. Susan in love. Ah, Susan was in love with a murderer. Her husband, bad man that he was, lay not yet cold at her feet, and already she was in love with this black-hearted killer. The feelings were too much for her. She would never admit them to anyone. Vincent, with his infinite reserve of cunning, saw these truths written on her face instantly, and knew everything entirely. He smiled. Giggity goo, something's gonna happen here! The smile angered her, and she decided at that moment that rather than give in to love, she would fight it. She would destroy David Vincent in order to stop loving him. She looked calmly at her gun. I'm afraid, Mr. Vincent, that I can forgive many things in a man, but shooting people in the back is not one of them, she said calmly. Yet just at that moment, the moment of truth when a man and woman stand before each other, there was a short, a shout from outside. Both the widowed lady and the handsome highwayman looked at the door. This is Her Majesty's police force, said the voice. It was, of course, Mr. Milan. <laughs> Mr. Melon. I was going to say blowed, but... Okay, I'm ruining it. The dodged, soulless embodiment of all that would crush a person's spirit. The king's worst enforcer. The most hated and feared man in all of England. Mr. Vincent, if you do not come out of there, I shall kill you and everyone you hold dear. The voice made them both shudder. They knew it to be true. Calmly, David Vincent proved beyond all doubt that whatever else he may be, he was no gentleman. Take off your dress, he muttered. Now, she gasped, while my husband's not yet buried and the law awaits <laughs> outside, I will marry you and make a real woman of you yet, my lady. Oh my goodness, winked the highwayman. But right now, if we are to escape the gallows, I just need to borrow your dress. Do not worry, I will not look. Quickly, she slipped out of her elegant yellow silk gown and was left humiliated in just her petticoats. The highwayman stole a glance at her beautiful figure, then grabbed the dress. Madam, drape yourself in this cape while I demonstrate that it's not me that our dear friend Mr. Mellon wants to kill, but you. Me, she gasped. You. With you and your husband dead at my hands, he can install himself as the Lord of Leicester. Your beautiful niece shall become his wife. He spoke, and she saw that he spoke the truth, in the way that people who speak only the truth know of truth. But she hates him, she blustered, her pretty petticoats blowing slightly in the beautiful evening breeze. All the better. Now watch this, said the handsome highwayman, knowingly. This is really long, sweet baby Jesus. While the beautiful and imperious lady shivered in her petticoats, her hair disheveled, her bosom heaving, her spirit unbroken, the handsome highwayman took the dress and put it on a map that was fortuitously lying nearby. It was a mop, not a map. My eyesight's getting really bad. <laughs> he stuck the, <laughs> stuck the mop and dress out the castle's window, so that in the darkening light, the mop's hair resembled Susan's own beautiful head of la... Oh my god! Lascivious curls! The darkened light of night, all that would be seen were the elegant folds of yellow silk from the beautiful gown. Standing proud and erect, only not draped across the heaving bosom of Susan's grod. Susan grod, but attached to a mob. At once, five shots rang out from below and the gown was reduced to rags. Vincent turned to our heroine. Now, will you trust me, madam? I am a thief, a murderer, a sinner, and your only hope of survival. Follow me. I don't believe a word of it, the lady spluttered, but in her heart she knew it was true. England was in the grip of evil. A madness had got the people by the throat, and she, Susan Grad, born a peasant and risen up to a lady of the manor, she whose heart was that of a proud woman who bowed to no man, she must save the nation. To do so, her only hope was to trust this man, whom she hated almost as much as she loved. 
There was no choice. It was that or have her head cut off and give up her family and the manor house. Yet still part of her wavered. Then a voice from below made her mind up for her. Is she dead, Vincent? Called out the treacherous police inspector. I know you're up there. Come out and calmly, and we can avoid too much further nonsense. I will spare you if you come out forthwith. The king has said I may pardon you if I so choose. Soon, this whole castle will be mine. David Vincent smiled and led the lady away across the rooftop of the castle to safety in the islands. Ah! That took a lot longer than I expected to read. I expected it to be, like, short like everything else, but, um... Despite my horrible ability to actually see the words on the screen, um, <laughs> not too bad. Uh, play dyslexia is a pain, ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so we got honor for talking to Rainsfall, but we did not get honor for talking to Mary Beth. But we'll check out some of the other interactions with people here in the future. Wait, is there... What? Is this... Oh, it's these guys! They're still here, trying to woo that poor lady! Oh my goodness! Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.